Hi, I'm Shivam. Hi, I'm Izzy. And this is Phoenix Chat. Where one of us can read. Which one? You, you find, find out. out. Hi again, and welcome back to Phoenix Chat. Um, it, it's been a little while. We've uh, had some personal stuff just coming up, and like uh, we're with the new school year, but we're trying to get back into uh, making more of these guys for you. <laughs> um, but uh, I believe the last time we, we left off in a little bit of a cliffhanger there, um, as we finally started talking about like the the holiday party, um, and we had just finished off with. Um, trying to kind of uh, calm down Essen a little bit uh, as we get back now into the fluff of, of the holiday party. The fluff. Um, yeah, so Tansy and Sprout at this point have uh, also not shown up to the uh, holiday party. Um, and uh, I, I believe their entrance was uh, Boondock straight up just said like, um, uh, as, as Tansy and Sprout are talking, this Boondock just kind of walks up, uh, scoops up uh, Tansy, plops her next to Morgan, then just picks up Sprout and walks off with him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. man. So Tansy and Morgan begin to kind of talk for a little bit, and uh, apparently Tansy uh, is into puzzle boxes, so she tries to help uh, Morgan with it, and she's trying her absolute best to sort out the puzzle box, um, but Morgan just ends up kind of feeling, like, stupid overall, because, like, Tansy's trying to do the thing where, like, she's just trying to, like, give him hints and stuff like that, but, like, it just does not work. <laughs> Uh, eventually Tansy gives a big hint of like, oh, well this is just like four digits and stuff like that, and then the box is probably open now. Um, what's some uh, four digits that might mean something to your mother? Um, and, and I think like, uh, <laughs> Morgan did like, uh, he, he did something stupid, like I think he just put in like, uh, zero, 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 and then like, no, and then zero, 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 one, no. <laughs> just trying to figure out like, what the hell it could possibly be. Um, before eventually Tansy suggests, like, maybe it's something related to you! Like, what, what's four digits that might be the here? Uh, um, <laughs> and Morgan's like, uh, uh my, my height? <laughs> for Tansy just says, how about your birth year? Why don't you check your birth year? As Morgan manages to open it up. <laughs> oh, man. And inside, I believe, was like, a. Uh, a new um, holster, as well as Morgan can now use this puzzle box um, to to hide anything uh, away that he wants to, um, and, and so uh, Morgan decides to to call up his mom, and his mom's like, "Hey, do you like your present?" Morgan's like, "No, no, absolutely not." <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and then uh, yeah, Susan wishes Morgan a happy holiday, and then Morgan quickly ends up with like, "Oh, also, this is my girlfriend." Then immediately hangs up the call. <laughs> <laughs> I think then Susan then called up Juliet real quick. Do yeah. <laughs> you want to explain? So she calls up Juliet. She's like, hey. I'm like, hey, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> You're a nightmare. Uh, I love Susan. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, she's like, I don't know what's going on with Morgan, but like, could you could you just like watch out for him and stuff? And Juliet's like, yeah, of course. Like. I consider Morgan, like, a really close friend, and I wouldn't let anything bad happen to him. And, like, mm -hmm. Tansy is his girlfriend, and she, like, fucking, like, you know, shows her really quick so that way Morgan doesn't know. <laughs> and she's like, I think she's pretty cool. We went on a babe quest together. It'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Susan's like, thank you. And, like, you know, thank you for, like, watching out for him and stuff. She's like, yeah, because unofficial, well, officially, yeah, but, like, Juliet's the oldest out of everybody. In mm. actual years, mentally, no, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, we, we then cut over to Sprout and Boondock. Um, Sprout gives Boondock a, a new set of strings, and Sprout explains that uh, if Boondock uses the new strings on his uh, gun tar, um, whenever he plays music, he can uh, summon tiny little like, illusions with it. Um, and Boondock decides to, uh, give Sprout a locket, um, 
And uh, we're, I'm gonna uh, say that uh, just uh, Boondock didn't tell any of the other party members what was inside of it, but just for the sake of you, the audience, at this point, as Sprout opens up the locket, the fucking tooth that Boondock <laughs> is missing is inside of it. Bonafide Boondock. One hundred percent bonafide Boondock. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> yeah, Boondock just tells Sprout like uh, not to open it until later, so. Um, but it was a sweet little moment, um, and, uh, as both of them are talking, um, both of them look up and realize they're both under the mistletoe. <laughs> that Juliet just so sneakily fucking pinned on top of them, just the fucking yes. flick of her kunai, there's mistletoe, oh, I wonder how that got there. <laughs> yeah. Sprout's absolutely blushing, and then, like, Boondock eventually, he, he pulls the Chad move the Chad. and goes in for the quick peck, uh, and he tries to just tippy-tap off, but, like, there's nowhere to really tippy-tap off to, so he's just kind of, like, he, he winds uh. up walking off with Sprout, both of them blushing madly. Um, and as they do, Juliet does another oopsie. <laughs> so you got a wand from the shop if you want to explain. So I got a wand from the shop, but I tried to make it sneaky so nobody else would see this. And, um, basically I pull out this wand, and I, like, you know, try to hit Boondock with this wand, like, with the spell yeah. that this wand is supposed to do. And, uh, you remember Boondock... remember what it does? Uh, it's called the Wand of Smiles. <laughs> <laughs> so it's supposed to make anybody that you hit this with, who, who uh, doesn't pass the save, uh, make them smile continuously, I think, for, like, a minute. And um, I wanted to do way, it so bad for a prank. <laughs> my favorite part about that item, too, is that um, it, it's one of those magic items that has a bunch of charges, and if you decide to use the latch charge, um, you have to roll a d20, and like with a lot of these magic items, like you roll a d20, and if you roll a 1 on the last charge, the item uh, disappears and is destroyed. Um, with the Wand of Smiles specifically, if you uh, roll a natural one, the Wand of Smiles turns into a Wand of Frowns, which functions the exact same way, but frowns <laughs> instead yeah. of smiles. <laughs> anyway, so I try to hit Julie, uh, Julia tries to hit Boondock with it, and of course mm -hmm. it doesn't fucking work. <laughs> and Boondock Boon does have a stupid charisma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Boondock just now looks over, sees Juliet cast some kind of spell on him, and the only other spell that he knows Juliet knows is Charm Person, because Juliet hid the wand, so he wouldn't see. Yeah, and I think the best part is like you tried to say like um oh, oh uh but but no like uh but, but not can see like the wand and stuff like that right? And then I said no, you specifically said you were going to hide the wand behind your back. I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I sprinted away because <laughs> I was scared. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Juliet. Uh, anyway, Snapeys! <laughs> yes, so Juliet fucking like sprints off to find anyone else before Boondock can bring down the wrath of God. Um, <laughs> and, and finds Amira and her husband walking in, and uh, coiled around their arms are the Snapeys. Snapeys. Um, yep. So <laughs> they they're these two little infant children, and like uh, instead of like legs, they got the little tails. They have them just like wrapped around uh, their parents' arms. <laughs> um. So Julia goes a little bit feral at that. <laughs> She's like, "Give me," and she does the grabby hands. And yes. I I think Miro was kind of like hesitant at first, and then she's mm -hmm. like, "Dude, I have to deal with hops on a daily basis. I can take care of two babies." And she's like, "Ah, that's true." She's like, "Just take the night off, you know, go drink and stuff." And she's like, "Ah, okay." So she's <laughs> like, "Baby time," and she has the snabies, and she's like, "I'm going to create chaos, gremlins with them." <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're just like sitting around like playing with the Snabies. It's very cute. <laughs> Snabies. <laughs> oh, man. Um. Yeah. Um, you you take a little break and have Aston watch over the Snabies as uh, you called up Cass. Um, you, you exchange some uh, holiday well wishes, and um, Cass shows off the, the gift that uh, you got him, which was um, a, a rubber chicken for to represent Cass, as well as Fox plushie that you can beat up whenever he's mad at Juliet. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. The fucking um, chicken is named Huevo, I would just like to yes. add. Yes. <laughs> um... And Juliet then mentions that uh, Essen wants to, to join the guild, and Cass is just like, oh, okay, can you vouch for him? I'll, I'll put him in immediately. And 
Juliet hesitates. Oops. So, Cass, he goes into full protective dad mode as, like, you know, like, it's not great when, like, your adopted daughter, you, you, you basically ask your adopted daughter, daughter point blank, like, oh, you trust, like, the, your boyfriend, right? And your adoptive daughter goes, hmm. <laughs> Oops. So, Cass goes full protective dad mode, and he's like, do you want me to, like, look into, like, hold on, like, uh, you just sit there right there, and I'm, I'll call in some favors, uh, I'll get some spies to look into us, and just hangs up the call on you, and Julia's like, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, fucking immediately, like, uh, you, I think you call up Faith, then. I did call Faith, yeah, yeah you, and I was like, you call I don't want to talk to you, give me Cass. <laughs> yeah, Faith just very dryly just says, like, happy holiday to you, too, <laughs> gives it to Cass. <laughs> Um, and, and Juliet's just like, okay, I need you to relax and drink today. Like, I'll sort this out on my own. I, I don't know, like, uh, I'll try to, like, figure out if we can trust him or not, but on my own, okay? Um, but for now, you need to just, like, sit there and, like, drink and relax. And, uh, I think you told Faith to just, like, go up to uh, your room, um, and, and pull out, uh, one of the floorboards, um. And inside of there was a thing of alcohol that she could, uh, share with Cass. <laughs> um, so you managed to, to calm him down. Um, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so you, you go back, uh, over, um, in the meantime, uh, Essen has, like, a, a brief talk, like, with the Karen, um, just, like, uh, throughout this entire break, uh, Essen's kind of slowly been, like, training with the Kirin order to, like, relearn, uh, holy magic. Um, and he's slowly but surely kind of, like, getting there in the training, and if all goes well, he should be able to recast magic, well, hopefully pretty soon, uh, as both of them are pretty optimistic about the entire thing. Um, as you, uh, head back and Essen has his navies back to you, Essen says, like, oh, go, go ahead and let, uh, me talk to Cass then, too. Um, and Juliet's like, um, I don't think so. And but because her arms are full of snabies, he's like, um, mm. let me just uh, grabs her fucking crystal out of her pocket and runs outside. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, no, wait, no, no. Ah! <laughs> um, but uh, Essen calls up Cass, and Cass is just in like full like a uh, Christmas dad mode, just like fucking like a uh, ugly holiday sweater, <laughs> fucking like Santa hat, everything. And he has to try to like switch to some kind of like serious mode in this Slowly ridiculous takes off the hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> um he he tries to like fucking like straighten his sweater out and stuff like that and tries to look like serious and stern as Essen just like, oh nice outfit, dude. <laughs> Cass just kinda of sighs and he just kinda of explains like there's been a lot of like rumors around Essen and he doesn't exactly like that. And Essen just kind of like dryly laughs and says there's likely to be more. Um but uh, he does want to. He, he, he wants to protect the party, and he wants to protect Juliet. As or uh, Cass, at least not that. Um, and then Cass just explains that um, if he wants to join the guild, though, the decision is not going to be with him. It's going to be with Juliet, as he trusts her judgment implicitly. And on a more personal note, the fact that Juliet can't vouch for him right now on the spot that worries him immensely. <laughs> <laughs> and then Cass just goes full dad mode as he shows off Shandrahas, his giant ass great sword he manages to wield around with ease. As he kind of tells us, and like, um, you know, it, I hurt bad guys for a living. So if you end up hurting Juliet, that makes you a bad guy in my eyes. So do not fuck this up. Um, as Essen. <laughs> <laughs> who's an idiot, <laughs> just laughs it off and says, dude, I've seen people with much of, like, larger swords and stuff like that, but we should totally duel sometime. Um, as Cass's eye is twitching as he just kind of says, like, hmm, yeah, no, maybe we will. <laughs> And Essen comes back to, to Juliet and just kind of like says like, oh yeah, like everything's fine, we scheduled a duel, and uh, whenever you're ready to let me into Canis Libertas is when I can join. As Juliet's just like, what the fuck? Yeah, she's like, bro, you will actually die. And then she calls Cass up like, don't you fucking start. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you eventually negotiated Cass down to, to one solid punch. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No killing, but just one solid one punch to the... One solid smack. <laughs> 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 Nothing more than a smack, though. And he's like, oh, yes. but mom. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um. Yeah, we... They, they, then uh, cut over to Boondock and Sprout. Um, they change out the, the strings on the gun tar. Uh, Sprout kind of admires like the old springs, which is like um, like a, a strange like a, like red kind of like a, a velvety color. Um, and just kind of explains that he's never really like seen like strings like these before, and they have like really like high quality and high made. Um, uh, but but uh, Boondock says like um, yeah, but I mean like I still have like the strings anyways if I want to like replace them back out. Um, and puts in the new strings, so, um, Boondock begins to, to play a little bit, and, uh, there's a nice little goofy scene where he, like, um, he, he, uh, starts making, like, illusions, makes like, a little tiny dragon, I think eventually he makes, like, a tiny little Juliet, uh, and has her, like, dance to the tune, <laughs> to, just to mess with Juliet a little bit. <laughs> God. Yeah. I tries to go up to, like, pick, uh, the fake Juliet up, but, uh, it's an illusion, so his hand just passes through, but, um, as, like, his hand passes through, the fake Juliet just, like, smacks, tries to smack his hand away. Yeet. <laughs> 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 um, the the two of them just kind of like talk a little bit, but and uh, Sprout eventually just kind of said like, yeah. So, I mean, ready to head back on the road though, and everything like that. Uh, how are you feeling about that whole thing? But next kind of shrugs. He just says like, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Um. Uh, but like Sprout can clearly tell something's bothering Boondock because he asks what's up and it takes uh, Sprout a little while to get like at the heart of the matter but eventually uh, Boondock just kind of says like um, well Essen just kind of said that like anyone who takes pride in being an executioner is horrible and he seemed to be like you know all buddy buddy and stuff like that with Minerva until he found out that she was this like executioner so and, uh, he, he kind of like shrugs at that um and Sprout realizes, like, oh, in Hope's Landing, you were an executioner, and, um, even more than that, I'm not exactly certain that Sprout exactly figured this out, but Boondock takes pride in being that executioner yeah. on Hope's Landing. Um, and, and Sprout kind of tries to make him feel better by just saying, like, um, you know, maybe he's not talking about you and stuff like that, and maybe it's, like, some other sort of, like, deal, and, like, uh... Boondock's like, uh, I mean, like, no, it's, it, it kind of sounds like it's pretty much targeted towards me, like, he, he, even if Essen doesn't know, like, I mean, he, he just hasn't figured it out, but as soon as he does figure it out, we're, we're not gonna be friends anymore, uh, and Sprout's just trying to make him feel better, like, maybe he's talking about some executioners that, like, uh, hurt bad people, or, uh, that only hurt innocents, um, and, like, Sprout eventually did, just, like, blurts that one out, and then, like, there's a pause, and Sprout's just like, um, wait, no, maybe it's not that. I don't think ex Essen was an execution of like, her innocent people and stuff like that. And Boondock, uh, though, says, like, um, mm, actually, I legitimately don't know what Essen did do before this whole thing. Um, and so, like, uh, Boondock is extremely sus of Essen, and, uh, Sprout at least uh, offers, like, well, I mean, he's helping you guys now, right? But Boondock just offers a very cryptic. I mean, sure, he's helping us now, but that don't change the fact that uh, he did what he did. Mm -hmm. um, as that was a tense little note as Boondock was then staring at Essen. Oh, man. Um. <laughs> We then got, uh, yeah, the, the rest of the party then kind of eventually wrapped up, and at the end of it, um, the, the dragons gathered everyone up, um, uh, as they made a little announcement to toast, uh, to the, uh, the heroes of Soliana, who managed to save the entire city as everyone cheered you guys on, um, they also revealed to, uh, everyone at the party that, uh, they were, uh, all dragons, um, and that they uh, had original horrible dragon names. Um, like, I think Sprouts was like Sprutel Dumunder or something like that. And like, Boonek Runch just pipes up, like, I can still call you Sprout, Sprout. right? And Sprout's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think everybody and... knew except for like Mira's husband. And he was like, what? Yeah. Your dragons? And all of us were like, yeah. <laughs> mm, we, we knew, dude. <laughs> yeah, we're Get even. The <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um. And, uh, you then got the, the True Sight mask, um, and you guys, um, 
Uh, as you guys put the when I put the true side mask on, as he looks at the dragons, the dragons uh, kind of look it's like a spectral image of, of them as real dragons, uh, overlaid uh, on top of them. Um, and, and Boonda kind of does the thing with, like 3D glasses, where he's like waving his hand like in front of him, trying to like touch the the spectral image of the dragons. <laughs> I think he was um, trying to grab Sprout's tail or something. Yeah, something stupid like that. <laughs> um, he eventually hands the mask over to Juliet to try it out, and Juliet also sees the dragons, and then, when Juliet looks at Boondock, black smoke appears to be coming from underneath the armor, as Juliet looks a little bit worried. Sus. Absolute sus. Anyway, so everything's fine and cool, and we start heading back home after the party's done. Fuck you, <laughs> Shiva. <laughs> nope. Um... <laughs> As everyone's heading back home, um, uh, I, I said, like, um, Boondock, you feel like, uh, like something, like, in your pocket, and someone just, like, I don't remember who it was, but someone I immediately said, me. ha, Boondock peed himself. I think it was me. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Yeah, no, and so, and so like, uh, Boondock player's like, uh, okay, well, what's in my pocket then? And I say, like, okay, you reach in your pocket, and you pull your hand back, and, uh, it looks like there's, like, blood in there. Um, and as Boondock just suddenly, like, jumps back, uh, and all of a sudden, like, the, the blood, like, um, the, it, it drips from his hand, it's, like, falls to, like, the ground, um, as it forms, uh, a face, uh, that just, like, suddenly kind of cackles at him, um, before suddenly very quickly disappearing. Um, and Juliet notices this, if you want to explain. Yeah, so she's like, yo, what's wrong? And he's like, mm. um, evil shit? And he, like, points to the thing, and she's like, fuck no. <laughs> so she basically books it to the nearest church. And, like, since she's not only a celestial, but she's also part of, like, the major guilds of Odyssea, she goes mm. in and she's, it's not claiming sanctuary. It's just like, hey, I am part of this guild. I need this church now in the name of this guild, like, bad and the mm. poor priest is like ah yeah sure cool and as we're trying to go inside boondock now is now a fiend and can't step on holy ground and the priest fucking faints because holy shit <laughs> mm. <laughs> um yeah so i go inside and like so there's like a there's like a an urban legend that if uh some churches have like holy weapons underneath like the altar and stuff to like in case to fight evil or whatever and mm. um Instead, uh, she she looked around and she couldn't find anything, so she took the old guitar strings. Or no, wait, no. She first she made the weapon and then she took the strings. So she took out one of her own kunais and she started using all the basin of holy water, and um, she was praying to whatever god that would listen to her. Like, hey, please help me. I need I need to help my friend please and uh essen deciding to channel his inner kieran energy uh mm -hmm. put his yes. hand on her shoulder and started like channeling holy magic into her kunai and it became a holy weapon yeah so i think the kieran actually very specifically like piped up and basically said like um okay like this might be a little bit earlier than like you're ready for it but like your friend needs you here, so I need you to, like, focus and concentrate, and I need you to make this magic happen now. Mm -hmm. Um, as Essen channeled the magic, and, yeah, this is, he, he finally un unlocked his holy powers again. Um, and Julia thinks she did it all herself. Weapon. <laughs> yes. She's it's like, ah, I did Essen's it. So forgiving. <laughs> um, <laughs> so then she goes over, and she's like, Boondock, I need the guitar strings, and he's like, why and she's like you just gotta trust me he's like no you need to tell me why and she's like okay look i like she honestly felt bad but like this is the she was like this i know i don't want to do this and you don't want me to do this but the only way i can think of is to cut those guitar strings something's wrong with those and she's like i know i've hurt you with your dad in the past i know this is your dad's guitar i get that and i'm so sorry if there was any other way i would do this i would but this is the only thing i can think of and uh he was like he reluctantly agreed. Like, as much as Boondock and Juliet, like, fight all the time and, like, disagree, they can, like, trust each other to, like, make the right choices for each other. Yeah, they can tell when the other's serious about mm -hmm. something. So, she grabs- she takes the guitar strings and she runs all the way back as far as she can in the church. And as soon as she cut them, the strings caught on fire and started screeching out an abyssal, and um, currently Boondock can understand an abyssal, and Essen can understand because of the... Uh, yeah. 
And we were like, what the fuck? And somehow I made a really high strength roll and kept hold of the strings from reaching Boondock. But like, sh like she was holding onto these strings and they were like trying to like tug her along and she was like digging her heels into the fucking carpet. She's like, hell no. Um, so, and then when the, finally the fire started going out, the smoke started to form a face and say, and tell to Boondock that they'll be seeing him shortly, just as they once saw Boondock's father. And we're all like, what the fuck? <laughs> man, oh, chill, man. fluffy Christmas mm -hmm. episode, everyone. And that's where we ended that session on a big old cliffhanger. Yay! Oh, man. Just to really <laughs> freak everyone out. Mm. Um... But yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for listening in to uh, another episode of Phoenix Chat. Um, yeah, so um, a special shout out to our patrons, uh, Spicy Turntable, the Mod Goth, and Nyquil Dreamer. Uh, you guys help us make uh, more and better content. Uh, Izzy, you want to plug our Twitch and when we'll be back live? <laughs> yeah, so on Twitch, if you look up Keeper of Kitsune, we actually stream our Iluna Nights campaign. Uh, normally, it's on Tuesdays at 2.30 CST, but because of school and like scheduling and purposes, we're, we're going to go on like a little mini hiatus until we can get like all of our schedules in order. We'll probably start mm -hmm. back up in October on Wednesdays now. Um, yeah. But yeah, you can watch um, us die. <laughs> <laughs> in the meantime, though, um, through September, uh, we're going to be trying to do at least some art streams and stuff like yeah. that. So just like uh, keep an eye out for our, on our Instagram. We'll try to be like announcing like uh, if we can do streams that week. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, All right. Fun fact. Uh, every holiday, Faith uses illusion magic to make her tiefling horns look like reindeer horns. And Izzy finds no. that adorable. No, Phoenix I don't! Yeah. No! 